welcome to the first part in a three-part series on taking a spring contact application and deploying it on VMware vFabric Application Director 5.0. Uh, the first step we'll do is log into the application. Uh, this is the default application landing page and you see all the existing apps. We're going to create a new one and I'll call it contact and you can optionally have a description. And I'll save it and then we'll create a new application version and we'll just leave it at 1.0 is fine and it's an in-memory database so we'll call it in-memory DB uh, for the app and it will be a standalone app on TC server on a single node. So once we've saved our version we can create a blueprint this is the main blueprint page. On the left we have logical templates we can use which represent uh, operating systems and services installed on them. Uh, we're just going to take a CentOS 32-bit OS and uh, this is called a node on the blueprint and here we'll change the name of it to contact app and here you'd have the opportunity to change the CPUs or the memory and also these are the logical networks that you can define and what we have by, defined by default is just fine. On the right here are application components such as ear, executables, jars and over here are all the services available. We're going to look for TC server I'll use 2.1 for this example expand it you can look at the properties that are available on it this is the uh, snapping components feature and you can see whether items are exposed or consume in this column so this is exposed is servlet container and directory and we'll go ahead and drop a war on which will automatically connect to the web after service start and service stop So you see that it says three properties were set. We'll go to it. I'm going to rename it and call it Contact Web App. And now if we look at its properties, we'll see these three values were automatically set for us. And for the context, this is the Web App context. We just want to set it to Contact. And then we just need to set our WAR file. This is a content type. This means that automatically for you on the virtual machine, the contact WAR will be downloaded for you. And when you reference dollar WAR file in your script that you're using, you're actually referencing the local file location that was downloaded for you, not the URL. All right, uh, that's all we need to do for this simple application. I'm going to click on deploy. This is automatically saving it for you and we're going to create a deployment profile called dev and we're going to deploy to a vCloud environment. So once I've chosen a deployment environment I can click on map details and we'll have the opportunity now to map our logical templates and our logical networks to physical ones and in the case of the uh, VM template we only have one choice available for it. You could have multiple ones. It's up to you when you define everything and I'm going to choose the first network here available. Now on this page you have the chance to change any application properties that you want to override. Uh, so we could have change the memory or the CPU or give a specific host name. Under services uh, we just have our TC server service and we'd be able to change anything here but everything's fine. Now I'll go to the application component section and we'd also have a chance to change the WAR file or the context if we wanted to. On the execution plan, this is the concrete representation of the logical abstraction of your application from the blueprint. And it's step by step exactly in what order the scripts are going to run in. Uh, so we see that the TC server will run install, configure, and start. And then our uh, WAR 
uh, contact web app will run its installation and then our application will be done. So this is all perfectly fine. Uh, also, you can have custom script libraries and if you were to have one, you can drag and drop at certain drop points of this custom script. An example of that could be in production. Uh, you might want to have uh, an email sent at a certain stage or you could call into a REST API for a workflow system and let, let it know that your application's running. But it provides a lot of flexibility for keeping uh, your application separate from possible you know, minor variations uh, around your deployment to specific environments. Uh, this is the final page here for review. So you have a chance again, you can look at your blueprint, your execution plan, and uh, all the properties that are defined for the application. So everything's good and we'll click on deploy. Right, right now our deployment is scheduled and it'll get picked up in a minute. This queues up all the deployments and starts processing them in the back end. Uh, we have four different panels here. The task details let you see the general details of the application that's being deployed. Uh, you can view your blueprint again. Here, as soon as it starts running, you'll see all the different VMs that are getting provisioned, and you'll see IPs resolved there also. And on the right here is your execution plan, and that shows step-by-step step the processing once, uh, once the VM is completely provisioned. So we'll wait and watch for the IP address to be resolved. Now we have an IP address result, and you see that the VM is still provisioning itself. All right, now you'll see that our contact application is provisioned successfully, or not the application, but the VM. Uh, we can now watch in the execution, execution plan for the installation. Uh, vFabric TC server has already installed itself, and we're just waiting for the contact web app to finish its installation. For each of these steps, you can view the script that was run, the actual properties that were used for the script, and also any logging from the script, so it's useful for debugging. I'll show that while the contact app finishes. And here's the logs for that one step. All right, the contact web app part of the process finished. The deployment's successful. We should now be able to log into our application. So let me just copy this IP. Open up a new tab. Just hitting the root first. So we see TC servers up. Now I'll go to the contact web app, which was our context. And here's the three default users we have, and I'll create a new one myself. All right, that's it. So we now have a successful deployment and we've confirmed the applications up and running. Now uh, let's go ahead and so this was to vCloud and we'll deploy to Amazon EC2. So I'll go back to our application. And I could make a new profile here but I'm going to go back into the blueprint and I will click on deploy again. And instead of choosing our existing dev one, I'm going to make a new one called dev ec2. And I'm going to choose an ec2 deployment profile this time instead of a vCloud one. I clicked on map details, exactly the same. We're going to have to map our uh, logical template and our logical network to physical ones.
Right, so we have a physical template resolved, and I'll select a network. I'm going to pick the public one. Click on Next. I'll leave the memory CPU and the host name the same. And the services, though, this time, though, I need to change a few things. So for one thing, I'm going to change the global comp value. And I'm making these changes because, as opposed to running internally in the network, uh, EC2's external, so it's not going to use a proxy when it resolves URLs. And also, I'm going to change uh, where these service artifacts are located to actually I have everything co-located in S3. Uh, we have a, a cloud tunneling system that's used for external cloud providers. So in EC2, there's actually a VM that's doing a tunnel back to our uh, application director server, and it only proxies application director and RabbitMQ, which we use for messaging. So if you do have like uh, uh, any binaries or anything you need to get to, you will need to have them accessible, and S3 is the best place to put that. It, it actually does help the performance of the deployment too. So let me finish up getting these couple different ones set up. So here's the TC server package. I'm going to put in my S3 location, and this is the installer. And I'll copy this last one. We're also going to point to the contact war in S3 instead. So we could have done all this in the blueprint, but in this case, we'll say our blueprint's oriented towards deploying to vCloud. But now this deployment profile can keep being reused again for TC server, or for, for EC2, deploying TC server in the contact web app. So I'll click on Next, and it's generating an execution plan, which is the same as before. And now when we review the properties, we'll see that we have this different proxy setting, and we're also pointing to uh, our S3 repo for these three different items. And I'll click on Deploy. So just as before, the deployment scheduled, and we'll wait for, uh, you know, the VM to get provisioned and watch the execution plan, and then we'll confirm the application again. Okay, we have an IP address resolved now, an external one, and the contact uh, VM still provisioning. And once it does, the execution plan, TC server installation, and the web app install will start. All right, the VM is provisioned. The execution plan is starting to run. So TC server installation is going first. All right, great. Everything's done. Uh, you see it was faster than before. S3's downloads are very fast. If we look at the properties for the TC server installation, we'll see the uh, three different values that we did. So two or two S3 and the others changing the Darwin proxy configuration. And the deployment successful. So let's get the IP address and we'll look at our fire apps up again. So the TC server is up and running. And now we'll go to our contact app on EC2. So we should, we'll see the three default users again. And I'll go ahead and create myself one more time as a record. Great, so now we've seen this application deployed to vCloud and EC2 by just changing the deployment profile, uh, which shows the flexibility of application director and being able to have repeatable deployments to different environments. Thank you, and stay tuned for the other two parts of the series where we'll take the contact application and have it deployed with an external database using vPostgres, and after that we'll use Apache 
to serve static content and also as a proxy to TC server.